Um, our next example is about hub field neural networks. The problem is like this. So given a graph with integer edge weights w, and this w can be positive or negative, and they are integers, all right? Uh, if the weight is negative, it means that we would like to have both ends to have the same state. Okay, so we represent the states by positive or negative one. I'll say to color them both white or both black. And if the weight is positive, uh, it means that the two ends would like to have different states. Okay, and the absolute value of the weight indicates the strength of this requirement. It's like how much do we want them to be the same or to be different? So this is the input, and the output is a configuration S of the network. Uh, the configuration means an assignment of the states S to each node U, where this S sub U is either positive one or negative one. But the biggest problem is that for any graph, there's no guarantee to have a solution. Right? There may be no configuration that respects the requirements imposed by all the edges. A very simple example is something like this. When we have three vertices, three edges, a triangle with all the positive edges. Positive means what? Positive means we like the both ends to be in different states, right? If this one is white, we will color this one to be black. And if this one is black, we will color this one to be white because this is positive. And then what do we get? Get that. And for this edge, both vertices would be white. However, the weight is positive. So that's impossible to get everyone happy. So if that is the case, if there's no perfect solution, we will try to find a configuration that is sufficiently good. So the next question is, how good is sufficiently good, right? And here's the definition. Uh, we define that in a configuration as the edge is good if this is true. If the product of these three values is negative, it means what? It means that if the weight is negative, then both of them must be either positive one or negative one. So the product is guaranteed to be one. So they have to be the same in order to get the, the overall product to be negative, right? So this is negative if and only if they are the same. Or on the other hand, if this is positive, and in order to get a negative result, they must have different signs, right? They must be different. So when we say an edge is good, it means that this constraint is satisfied. Okay, otherwise, it's bad. And we say that a node is satisfied if the weight of incident good edges is no less than the weight of incident bad edges. That's what we mean by saying sufficiently good. Uh, to write it in a more mathematical way, it corresponds to this inequality. That means that means for this node u, and let's consider every edge that is incident to u, we have that the total sum of this product is not positive. So that implies that the good edges is more than the bad edges. We say a configuration is stable if all the nodes are satisfied, uh, not necessarily perfect. But as long as for every node, there are more good edges than the bad edges, that configuration is acceptable and we say it's stable. Okay, let's look at one specific example. So we have a graph like this. Initially, all the nodes are colored white. And that's fine with these edges, right? But that one is not good because the weight is positive and they should be in different color. 
So now let's flip the color of one node. Let's color this one to be black. All right. If this one is black, then this edge is good. However, that one is no longer good. Then let's flip this one and this one. All right. And how about that one? If we keep it white, then it's going to be a bad edge. But is it okay to have one bad edge? Uh, let's look at this node. All right. If it's colored white, then this edge is good. So we have negative 10. And this edge is bad. And we have positive 5, negative 10. Plus 5 is negative. This one is satisfied. So this node is satisfied. And how about this one? This is a good edge, right? So we get negative 4, minus 1, minus 1, plus 5, since this one is bad. Okay, but to sum them up, this is negative. So that one is also satisfied. So that is fine. This is a stable solution. But in general, we have to consider this question. Like, does a hot field network always have a stable configuration? And if so, how can we find one? Um, we have an extremely simple algorithm to solve it. It's called the state flipping algorithm. So whenever we encounter a node that is not satisfied, let's just try to flip it. Okay, so this is extremely simple. Uh, we start from an arbitrary configuration S. The trivial case is like, uh, we, we just assign everyone the same color at the very beginning, right? And check if this configuration is stable. If it's not stable, we simply get one unsatisfied node, all right? And flip its state and keep going until everyone is satisfied uh, and return this configuration. So for example, uh, let's start from this configuration and check if it is stable. The answer is certainly no. So which one is not satisfied? Let's check this one. All right. It has one good edge and one bad edge, right? And to sum them up, this is positive 10, this is negative 8. So it's positive, and therefore this one is not satisfied. So let's flip its color. All right, so this one is satisfied. Okay, let's pick up another one to check. How about this one? Obviously, this one is not satisfied. So let's flip it. Okay, now so far, this one, this one, and this one, they are all satisfied. And how about this one? We have three good edges and one bad edge. But when we sum them up, it's something like positive 8 minus 7, that's positive 1. So this is not satisfied. Now let's flip the color. And if this color is flipped, then these two nodes are no longer satisfied. Then we have to flip the colors of both of them. Okay, is it okay now? Finally, yes. From this process, we can see that once we flip the color of one node, it's not necessarily the end. The color of this node is very much possible to get flipped again and again, right? So the question is, will it always terminate? And the good news is that the answer is yes. And we have this claim. We claim that the state flipping algorithm terminates at a stable configuration after at most W iterations. This W is the sum of all the weights, the absolute value of the weights. Okay, uh, let's try to prove it. Uh, the proof is actually quite simple. Let's consider the measure of progress. Let's consider this phi of S. The input is the current configuration S. Okay, and this function is what? It's the total sum of the absolute value of the weights of all the good edges. So it measures how good the current situation is. And when you flip state, 
all the good edges instant to you become bad, and all the bad edges instant to you become good, right? And all other edges remain the same, correct? So what's going to happen to this file after flipping? After one flip, we get s prime from this s. So what is phi of s prime? Phi of s prime is based on the previous phi of s minus all the bad edges plus all the good edges. Bad and good corresponds to the resulting configuration. Okay, and since the reason we flip u must be that u was not satisfied, right? So before we flipping u, the good edges is less than the bad edges, strictly less than, so u is not satisfied. That's the very reason we flip it, right? So after flipping, u must be satisfied. Therefore, the weight of the good edges must be strictly greater than the weight of the bad edges, right? And therefore, this part must be positive and is at least 1, right? It means what? It means after each flip, phi of s must be incremented by 1 at least, right? Clearly, we have that this phi of s is never more than this w because the w is the sum of all the edges, all the weights, right? And phi is only the sum for those good edges. And therefore, clearly, we have that this phi is bounded above by w. So in the worst case, uh, what is the worst case? The worst case is when we start from 0 start from all the bad edges, right? And every step, we can only increment phi by exactly 1. And the final state is when all the edges become good. And still, we can get it done in w steps, right? And that completes the proof. Now let's try to understand it from local search point of view, how it's related to local search. So the optimization problem becomes to maximize that phi, uh, which is the sum of the weight for all the good edges. Right? And the feasible solution set is any feasible configuration. And the neighborhood is defined to be the configuration that can be obtained from S by flipping a single state. And according to the previous analysis, we see that any local maximum in the state flipping algorithm to maximize phi is a stable configuration. All right, so the last question is, is this a polynomial time algorithm? The time complexity is bounded above by w, right? However, w is not a polynomial term, right? Because taking w as the input like we have mentioned before, taking w as the input, uh, if it's big O of w, that complexity is actually exponential, right? Because the input size is the number of bits that w occupies. And, and therefore, if it's big O of w, it means it's big O of 2 to the power of the number of bits, right? So that's exponential, that's not polynomial. but is there any polynomial time algorithm? It's still an open question. Right? It's still an open question to find an algorithm that constructs stable states in the time polynomial in n and log w. If it's log w, that will be linear to the sides. Right? That actually gives the number of bits occupied by w. Or on the other hand, people are still trying to design algorithms with a number of primitive arithmetic operations that is polynomial in n alone, independent of the value of w.